It's a very special day for me, of course, because I was a graduate here many years ago. <clears throat> I remember that day well because I don't have many arguments with my father, but that was the day we had one, one big stand-up blue because I just didn't want to be here. I, I was not one for ceremonies. And Dad said to me, Graham, this is not about you. This is about your mother and I, and you're coming whether you like it or not. <laughs> so I'm lucky enough to have my mother and father here again today. And when I was getting a little nervous about making this speech a couple of days ago, Dad said, Graham, this is not about you. This is about your mother and I and them. <laughs> and you're coming whether you like it or not. So my team and I uh, developed this little device here, which is what we call Bank Vault. It stops cyber hackers accessing your bank account. 2019, this is going to grow from what is currently a half a trillion dollar problem to $2 trillion um, worldwide. And so potentially this for us is a multi-billion dollar opportunity. As uh, the professor said, we uh, won the first prize, or uh, the Top FinTech Award, at the uh, Silicon Valley uh, Forum's World Cup Tech Challenge um, a few weeks ago. So to get the business out of the road really quickly, American style, um, I've got a little bag of these here. If anybody wants to catch me out the back later, uh, you're welcome to buy one. <laughs> so I am extremely honoured to be here today. And although I'm here on the dais under the spotlight, this is all about yourselves, the graduates. There's a message that I want to deliver today. It's really follow your dreams passionately and really don't hold back for anything. If there's a theme to this, it's take risks. So Stanford University and UWA are identical brick for brick. The architecture is the same, but that's where the analogies stop. I heard one of the university um, professors tell me recently that she'd asked her students when they finished her last year, who here wants to be an entrepreneur when they finish? Not one put up their hand. If I'd asked that same question at Stanford University, there would not be one hand down. So why is this? This is what we have to change. To share a little bit about my story, um, yes, I graduated as a pretty mediocre student. Every semester, I'd fallen in love with another girl and it didn't work out, and just as exams were breaking, and honestly, study, I just couldn't bring myself to do it. There was none, none going on. My career advice really did come from the guys at the pinball machines. And when I realised finally that my life had been ruined, I finally took stock, listened to my instincts, and that was when I decided, no, computer science was going to be my thing. I enrolled too late. Um, I was desperate. The dean, I'm not sure if he's still here, said, no, I'm sorry, we're full. The answer is no. But I was highly motivated, and that didn't stop me. I simply came up after work to every lecture, and eventually, many, many, many weeks later, they let me in. This proves one thing, 80% of success is just turning up. So I studied full time, I worked full time, finished that year, it was hard, but it was exhilarating. And that was another thing I discovered, was actually following my passion was easy. While I was at university, I was also diagnosed with a neuromuscular uh, problem. And I do at times struggle to even stand up without, without tablets now. What it actually did for me was that my whole life, I didn't want to miss out on anything. I was continuously striving. I knew nothing else. And that actually embedded one very important quality in me, which I realise is my success now, and that is tenacity. So that backdrop, three very short stories. A friend's father once said to me, Graham, with that idea, do you want to actually wait till the end of your life to find out and wonder actually whether it ever could have been successful? And that was enough to kick me in the pants. I started my first software company straight out of university. I was working 120 hours a week. I did that for two years. I took on three partners. Each of these were 30 years my senior, and they swindled me. I lost everything. What was worse than that was that I actually, to get control of the company, had to actually crush my self-confidence, which they almost did. At rock bottom, I had to start rebuilding again from first principles. It was hard. Miraculously, over the next two years, that whole thing went full circle. Obviously, I was the only guy doing the real work. They crashed without me, and what happened in the end was I was actually reunited with my inventions, with my brainchild. You can't imagine how that feels. I actually still run that business today, 30 years on. Lessons I've learned. Work hard, and you'll do well. Nobody can ever take away what you know. And business is simple. You do a good job, people ask you back. The second story is about timing. Timing is everything. Yet tenacity outlives time. So my team invited, invited some incredible technology. Um, we grew to 16,000 users, not huge by Silicon Valley standards, but so we set up an office there, and we were 10 years ahead of them in the, term, in the field of cloud computing. Cut a deal with Yahoo, we're looking at cutting a deal with Swiss Telecom. 
when the global financial crisis happened. I literally flew into Perth and the hour that I flew into Perth, the Lehman Brothers went broke in 2008. We were out of money, so the funding we were going to receive evaporated. We entered what we call the long, dark winter. We took sacked all the, uh, the sales guys, focused on our R&D, which is really where our core was, and started what we thought was an eight-week project. And every eight weeks, we'd look at it again, it was still eight weeks further out, the endless horizon. It was like going to work every day and you were digging your grave deeper, and it was soul-destroying. What else do you do? At what point do you decide to quit? That lasted for us 27 months. The day we broke through, let me tell you, it was like digging a hole through to the other side of the world. We were flying high. It was unbelievable. And we painted did something really incredible. It was what we would call, we called it Rainmaker. It was future-proof IT. And we could build it within seconds. Lessons we learned. Tenacity is like a river. It outlasts every obstacle. One really important lesson from Silicon Valley that uh, I came home with was validate everything you're working on first and uh, invest behind success. My third story, to be quick, the entrepreneur's roller coaster. Being an entrepreneur is an up and down roller coaster ride, and at any one point in time, you can only look straight ahead. We were looking at this pilot with uh, Stanford University, which is incredible. It's the heart of Silicon Valley, and all we could see was the stratosphere. Suddenly, a few bumps in the road, and we're now looking at the horizon. It's still okay. We can still do this. And then suddenly, we're running short of money. We can see that we're looking at the ground coming up at us rapidly. And when you start experiencing this, what happens is your ears start ringing, your eyes go out of focus, your heart is pounding, and you're looking at oblivion in the face. It's the end of everything that you know, your career, your family's future. There is nothing more scary. What happens, or what happens is that when you're in that situation, you're painted into a corner, you learn that you can climb the walls. You get out of your comfort zone, you talk to people you would never normally talk to at a very deep personal level about your fears and what's going on and what you need because you cannot imagine what is in those other people's universes and that's where the magic happens. That is what the whole of life is actually about. What happened two days before we were going to close the business? We got funded. It was a fairy tale. The guy who backed us is probably one of the top IT guys in Western Australia for the last 20 years. He totally backed everything we were doing. On the back of that, we pivoted. We turned this technology into addressing this issue of cyber hacking. We found that the same technology had a thousand times leverage on what we were doing previously, and that is now Bank Vault. The story's not over. We're still right in the middle of it right here today. Um, I've been pushing this wheelbarrow uphill now for 20 years. It's suddenly easy. <laughs> Everybody gets this in a half a sentence. Um, I think we're probably going to make it. I still could end up working for the council next month, but I, I reckon we're there. So if there is one thing that I would like to say about this is, is if I can do this myself against the odds, with just a little tenacity, then honestly, any one of you can do it. Five quick bullet points to end. Dreams are important. Follow your dreams. They are what has created everything. Doing something 99% is hard. Doing 100% is easy because there is no other thing to do. A person's worth is not what they've done, it's what they're about to deliver. If you met yourself as a seven-year-old child, what advice would you give yourself with what you know today? For me, it was really don't care about what other people think, just go full tilt. And the single most important ingredient for success, I think, is this. When you're defeated and you're crushed, find another reason to stand up and keep going. That is how you grow and take the lessons into the future. Congratulations to everybody who's graduating from here today, from the University of Western Australia. Take risks, follow your dreams, and never be the first to give up. <laughs>